Hi, my name is Asusena from the Chino Basin Water Conservation District, and today I'm going to teach you how to make different types of bee hotels to support the native bees in our community. Many people don't realize that there are many different types of bees. The most common bee you'll see in your garden is a European honeybee, which did not originate here. In California, there are over 1,600 species of native bees. Many native bees can thrive in our gardens if their needs are provided for. Native bees almost never sting and are far better pollinators than the European honeybee. With the expansion of urban areas and increase in human population, the presence of native bees has declined due to habitat loss, and they need our help. Being part of the native garden community means that we have valuable food resources for native bees. Through habitat gardening, we can increase the population of native bees. If you would like to learn more about habitat gardening, please check the links in the description below. This video series provides instructions on a number of DIY projects to provide nesting spaces for native bees. And remember, pollinator-friendly gardens don't use insecticides or pesticides in order to protect the beautiful residents of our communities. First, we will need to gather some materials. You'll need two 4x4s that are approximately 4 feet long. You'll need three headlock screws to secure the 4x4s, a measuring tape, safety glasses, and a hammering drill. And although it's not pictured, you will need some medium grit sandpaper. Now, most importantly, you will need different size drill bits to make these sized holes. The hole sizes we have selected accommodate different kinds of bee species. Feel free to pause here. For the smaller drill bits, you should try to drill depths of 3 to 5 inches, and for the two larger drill bits, you should drill 5 to 6 inches. You can use this optional drill bit extension to help drill 6 inch depths. To start things off, we'll need to secure our two 4x4s together. If you need to get your 4x4s trimmed down to size, your local hardware store such as Home Depot would be happy to help you. We took an 8 foot 4x4 and cut it in half to get our two 4x4 sections. We used three headlock screws, one at the top, in the middle and the bottom. Clamps should be used to hold the sections together. Now that that's done, we can flip it over to the other side to do some measurements. Because we are using five different drill bit sizes, we divided our 4x4 into five 8 inch sections. Whether you want to section off the different size drill bits is entirely up to you. We decided to put our small holes towards the top and the larger ones towards the bottom, but you can drill in whatever order or organization you please. If you decide to use the 332 drill bit, remember not to use too much force as we snapped ours off in the wood by accident. Although your holes don't need to be in any particular arrangement or order, you should keep the holes 2 centimeters or 3 quarters of an inch apart. Here is a close-up example of what your holes should look like. As we approach the bottom, it's time to use the larger drill bits. We drill down as deep as possible. Going back in our large holes, we decided to use the drill bit extension to achieve even deeper holes. When you are done drilling, you can sand the surface for a cleaner finish. Vacuum away the sawdust or shake out as much as possible. To prevent our bee hotel from being knocked over, we decided to attach a cinder block pier with a built-in metal strap. This can be purchased at your local Home Depot, or you can secure your bee hotel in any way that you see fit. Looking at our hotel, we notice some splintering near the hole entrances. Sharp edges need to be sanded down as they can cause premature tearing to the wings of bees. To smooth out our edges, we used a thin file and a Dewalt grinding stone drill attachment. The files we purchased on Amazon work perfectly in our smaller sized holes. Insert your file and work in circular motions to clear away splinters. You can continue to use the thin file on the larger holes, but the drill attachment makes it much easier and produces an even cleaner finish. We've created a lot of sawdust, but it can easily be removed with compressed air. I've never stayed at a hotel without a roof, so it's best that we add one. Adding a roof or an overhang will help protect your hotel from rain. We drilled four holes on the top and secured our roof with screws. Now that we've successfully made a proper bee hotel, we should place it somewhere it'll get full sun and some afternoon shade. 
If you prefer a more native look in your garden, you could always use any untreated wood material you have laying around. To achieve this, all you'll need to do is drill bee-sized holes. Providing habitat for native bees does not have to be difficult. And now, you have another interesting feature for your garden. You might be wondering how you'll know if your hotel is being used. Well, bees make it pretty obvious when they've used a nesting space as they cap off the entrance with materials such as mud, plants, and resin. It's important to give your new nesting habitats at least a year after placing them for bees to find and use them. Lastly, but no less important, is cleaning supplies for your bee hotel. Cleaning can be done with a 10% DIY bleach mixture and some pipe cleaners. Cleaning your bee hotel once every year before spring will keep your bees mite and disease free. You can spray the inside of your holes or dip your pipe cleaner in your 10% bleach solution and scrub the interior. Any old lodge debris can be easily removed with some compressed air. Remember not to disturb or clean holes that are still capped off for overwintering. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Let us know how your bee hotel turned out in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with your friends. If you would like to see more content like this, click our logo to subscribe.